Um, we now know that molecules like that, that have that you know, phenolic acetate function are bad. Um, and I, I really worry that I'm starting to see like THC acetate show up and other um, cannabinoid acetates where that same problem can happen. So, you know, I, I, I'm fearful that we may inadvertently even go down that path again without uh, being a vape excipient or anything um, being used like in the same fashion. We're just going to make a molecule that we think is going to be more psychoactive or interesting and cause that problem. Hmm. Um, what is it starts to become complex chemistry, so I don't want to like, right. flip you're, everyone out there, but that's... Um, yeah. you're, talk, you're talking <laughs> so, about things that I've never the, heard of. Yeah, um, yeah. What the is easy THC think of that acetate? Is, um, so... It's um, adding a small polar group to THC that allows it to pass the blood brain barrier better. Mm. So it's a very like inexpensive and relatively simple chemical transformation to perform. So if I have a lot of these things around somebody with, you know, enough rudimentary college level cannabis or chemistry knowledge is going to say, Hey, you could do this. And here's how you could make this potentially more psychoactive, um, which is, not necessarily the case. And I don't think it's needed in this case either. We've got plenty of the right molecule. Don't go mess with it. Um, but that, if you heat it, is going to cause the same things that we saw with vitamin E acetate. And if you're dabbing it or vaporizing it or putting it in combustion products, you could see these same problems. Um, and then we'll have an even bigger you know, regulatory problem. So I really caution anyone that would understand that to not do it. I think the inadvertent repercussions of it could be far greater than we'd ever anticipate or want to see.